This week's episode of the Stickers and Scuffs podcast is presented in partnership with our good friends at JRS Auctions. JRS Auctions is your go-to for the ultimate collection of amazing items to make your home, garage, shop, fan cave shine. With countless items covering a wide variety of brands, JRS has a bunch of lots during its fall colors sale that we have to show you, including boats, power washing equipment, collectible action figures, including Robin, the Batmobile, the Joker, and the Riddler. If DC ain't your thing, then why not Green Goblin or the Lizard from Spider-Man? If you're all about sweet rides, then how about the motorcycles, trucks, trailers, and even RV JS has available? Want to ride in style? Well, what's more perfect in Canada than a Zamboni? But in our view, this 1966 Chevy C10 custom Harley Davidson truck is up there as the hottest item in this week's auction. Bidding is open right now and closing begins Sunday, October 15th at 1 p.m. Don't miss out and register to place your bid at jrsauctions.com. Now we have to thank JRS Auctions for partnering with the podcast all season long and with our guest for this week. Connor Ellis. Hi, this is Mario Andretti, and you're tuned into Cam Graydon and the team as Stickers and Scuffs podcast. They're true Canadian racing fans. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. We start a another fresh month here on the show. Second week after a what was a uh, uh, well, it was a great weekend for you, Graydon, out at ACC. It was a horrible day for me out in yep. uh, what felt like negative thirty with the rain and the cold and the uh, the wind. But we're back for an episode presented by our good friends at JRS Auctions. We've got an auction on right now. So why not have the guy that carries their name on his car? Connor Ellis is finally on the show. Connor out of the Oscar Hot Rod Series for CTE Racing. Connor, how are things going? Uh, well, it's been a long season so far. I'm sad, Kind of sad to see it ending, but means I get a rebuild for next year. Rebuild is definitely the word. Uh, the The car took a pretty big hit at Delaware Speedway, and it's been... I, I'm going to throw the question about how your season was, but it felt like you had moments where things were really good, and then others, it was just a bit of a struggle for you. Yeah, we've been struggling with this car all season. So here we blew up. We had a first weekend at uh, Flamborough. We had our valve cover come loose and spew oil all over the exhaust. So we got black flagged in the feature. Then the next weekend at Sobel, we blew up in practice. So we had our friend Hoppy Hopkins throw the number on there. Uh, then we had a couple weeks where we had a borrowed engine from our friend Rockwood and it got us through a bit. And then when we went back, when we went to Peterborough the first time this year, car felt a little off the whole race and then finally came across the start finish line and lifted into one and i knew something went so shut off all the power and sure enough it blew apart the timing chain on the off lap so just my luck at least i got to finish the race there and then we uh 
scrambled, found another motor for Brighton, put it in, and it blew up in the driveway. Oh, my God. Yeah, but then we got lucky because it rained out. <laughs> then we put another one in, and it blew up in the driveway as well. So then we had to use Bucky's car, or Bucky's dad's car, I should say. And we actually got a heat win there and a top three, which has been my best finish in the in this division so far, which I, I was honestly quite happy with. I, I was quite impressed with it. And so then we uh, found a motor from a good friend of ours that I actually went out and uh, helped up at Sunset. He uh, just started racing in a uh, hot, the hot rod division up at Sunset this year. And so he gave us his spare motor to put in the car. And we took it to uh, Delaware and, well, we seen how that one went. And, uh, yeah, that one was fun. And the first time, <laughs> I'm actually going to go back. First time at Delaware this year, we, uh, first night, I somehow managed to rip the uh, upper link suspension out of the car. So it was knocking on the back of my driver compartment for the whole race. And we're figuring it started to let go in the first heat race. And uh, so then finally got got the car back together, went to Delaware. And we, we actually unloaded pretty quick because I just put a bunch of time into the car over the past couple of weeks. New engine, new shocks, new springs, set up. We were ch trying something new and found some speed. It was quite good. And... Uh, well, then I had the struck a bad luck there. And yeah. funny thing is, is I went back and looked at the time and our good friend Keenan, uh, that lent us the motor. He, ha he had called me before I was even off the track to offer me his car to run wow. for the rest of the season. I was like, how did you know that quickly? But then I remembered, Oh yeah, that's right. It's on TV. <laughs> uh, that's, that's when we talk about a, a season that is just miserable. Yeah, I mean, it's racing. that was sadly the kill shot for that chassis was, at Delaware but, too. But I, I think the great. What I really wonder about this as a racer is it, after you've had a season like that, are you just kind of like, all right, I'm done with this. Let me get something else because it's bad luck. <laughs> um. Well. So funny thing is, is I was warned about this coming too. So I was told, look, you had the amazing first year. I actually got seventh in the championship last year. And I was like, all right, well, hope for better this year. And luckily with a some help from our friend Hoppy and him getting us a couple good finishes. And, uh, well, we are currently sitting in sixth in points, I believe, just a couple points behind Nick and then a couple more points behind Ryan. And it's actually it's quite close points battle there and I'm quite enjoying racing with them. And I'm definitely coming back next year because I, I'm honestly I love the cars. I love the division. I love the drivers. It's I, I enjoy it so much, even with the season I had. <laughs> Well, well, it's not a pretty yet. good endorsement. Yeah, I was going to say, this <laughs> is... You guys, yeah, you earned every inch, every lap absolutely. this year. And you also, I mean, you've developed a pretty good reputation of being a pretty clean racer, and that uh, you're earning respect out there too, man. And that's a, a pretty good endorsement for just uh, being fairly new to the tour. Uh, talk a little bit about how you got to the tour, because I know you've uh, you've kind of climbed the ladder uh through uh, the divisions in Ontario too, eh? and you, with a little bit of touring around. Yeah. Well, um, let's see here. How far back do you want me to go to the very beginning? Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we started out in these little junior late models with the nine house, nine horse Honda engines, and we started out in those. Just me at first, and. Well, my sister was, was kind of her idea. She was a big encouragement to go into them. Sadly, she was just a little too young, but I was just of age to go into it. So we actually started out racing on Wednesday nights at Delaware. Cool. And oh. I don't, oh, yeah. We started there. And then at the end of the first season, my dad allowed us to go to Grand Bend. And believe it or not, we were actually on the road course 
there's a little go-kart track inside of it. And that's what, yeah. that's what we were on. Cool. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty fun. So we kept with it. Uh, two or two years later after that, my sister came in and another junior late model. She seemed to be enjoying it, but it wasn't quite for her at that moment in time. So she ended up leaving and I took over that car and we won quite a few races there ended up winning a championship as well. And since then we had two years overlapping with the mini trucks and those. Um, and sadly that was just as the, uh, COVID came out, I was going into the adult mini trucks and I was, we aren't supposed to say winning because it was just for practice, but if you looked at the looked at the races, you would you would have thought we were racing for the Daytona 500 there, because we were, we would be bumping and banging in, in practice, <laughs> and uh, well, it was we were having a really successful season there, and then moved on to Bone Stocks, and started out. Well, actually, my first time to Bone Stock was one of David Rockwood's, and I tried it out at Flamborough for Fro or for Fl Frostfest, yeah. So tried that out. I didn't even make the main race. I, I, I'll be honest. It was completely out of my habitat there. So that was interesting. And then we decided, well, let's build a car in a week for an enduro. And well, we overbuilt the car and built a bone stock in a week. <laughs> and so then we had that bone stock. And then I ended up buying myself a cobalt, turning that into a bone stock. And we went to Flamborough the one day to test for the cobalt. We couldn't figure out why they were selling this car for so cheap. Well, go to Flamborough and go to shift the car into third. There's no third gear in the transmission. A couple weeks later, second gear blows out of it. It's like, all right, well, we got one week to build the Sunfire back up for the start of the Varney tour. And, well, got it built again. <laughs> and started there and I think I finished top three in the first race and fifth in the second race. Um, and after that, a couple of guys like Nathan Detweiler and uh, Marco Gill came over and were like, hey, you don't need the rookie stripe on the back of that. <laughs> so took that off for the rest of the season and ended up finishing second that season. And then we took the car to Autumn Colors. And we were just hoping to finish the race. Like we were not hoping for a good finish at all. We were just like, hopefully we finish. And I managed to pull out third in the main feature with, with a car that we were told was probably not going to do anything because it was an automatic. So we were quite relieved when that happened. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so then we went into the hot rods and well, we, we were actually already planning on building a hot rod because we had a couple friends who were in it. And the one day, First time I ever seen the hot rods race. It was back when I was maybe still in a junior late model or mini truck. I think it was right in the lap over years. Uh, I was sitting there. We were up at sunset and I got to watch Tyler Hahn and stomping Tom and Amanda Bolson, all them racing together. And I, I took quite a liking to Tyler Hahn's driving like shirt. Sure, he bumps. Yes, I understand that, but he's realistically, you take the bumping out of the equation. He can move through traffic with such a smooth flow that I was like, I, I want to race against him. I want to race against him so bad. So we started looking and we found a chassis for a good deal and we built it. I actually ended up working at McCall's over the winter to help pay for it and got it built weren't that quick i'll like chassis is a little bit old a little bit that's kind of why it was starting to break apart on me but we we had some decent speed for how old it was and so we were like, all right hopefully we can just get a couple more years out of it and then build a new one well that got cut short obviously <laughs> so we're hopefully going to come back next year with a faster car it's, it's the way that you want it to go, right? I'm very curious why you guys went with the Chevelle uh, body. Um, was it just favorite car, or is there a backstory well, to that? It is a favorite car of one of the crew members on the team, 
might not be mine, but it's my stepmom's. <laughs> so, okay. Car <laughs> is a '68 Chevelle, and that's exactly what we built. And I'll be honest, I'm starting to say quite a liking to it. Yeah, I'd uh, say so. I mean, the the for 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 us, I mean, one of the we've had a couple of the hot rod guys on here, and it's always such a very entertaining conversation because, um, th these. <laughs> I think what we we've had this conversation before, great, is that cars nowadays aren't sexy. Uh, they're kind of just generic. Generic. Whereas yeah. <laughs> all the cars in the Hot Rod series all have a unique. I mean, where else are you going to see a Pontiac Bonneville be racing across and racing against a Chevelle, racing against a Studebaker, racing against a Beaumont? It is it, like, and now even with Kenny McNichol and CP. Now you got a truck in there as well. I'm like, this, this is one of the coolest, like, I just need a, uh, old ancient Volkswagen Beetle in there. I know it's not a road. It's not a, an actual, <laughs> it's not an actual like stock car or anything like that. Herbie ain't but, real, bud. Like, let's actually make a Herbie <laughs> car to go out on, and battle on the hot rods, man. Like it is, it's just so cool. And the fact that you guys are able to take these, and f first off, to find the bodywork, you know, to get it, because you have to have original, like, it has to have original pieces, right? Yeah. And, well, where we went to find it was actually Kenny McNichol himself. We went oh, out to no his... way. We were like, hey, we're building a hot rod. Do you know of, like, anywhere we can find a body? And Kenny McNichol's dad goes to my stepmom and goes, hey, come out to the shop. I got something sitting out back. We go out there and then there's this old gray, little bit rotten because it's been sitting for a while, Chevelle. And we're like, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. So we get it back to the shop. We, this thing was like half Bondo as well. Um, <laughs> like we're, we started like sanding down the front valence to uh, get it like flat and smooth and like just ready for primer. And I'm like, that's just coming off in chunks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, all right. So we made it up and it was looking pretty sharp for the beginning of the first season. It was sure a little bit beat up for this one still, but we're working, working around that and hopefully having a nice and pretty again for this coming year. And, uh, well, we, uh, <laughs> since we got it there and, uh, Jesse Kennedy's old car was also one of Kenny McNichols cars. And that's when they got the old school cool across the back. And, uh, oh, when, uh, I completely forgot his name. He drives the, uh, four, number four Chevelle. He bought, bought it off of, uh, Jesse Kennedy. Um, good buddies, Steve McCaw. Oh yes, yeah, Steve. So once we heard he bought it and took it off, we're like, well, the car came from the McNichols. We can put it back on. So we got the, uh, old school cool down in, uh, the Kool-Aid font by Haley McNichol. And we put that across the back and we uh, threw on some, the uh, Zardo colors for the numbers and all that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how the car has come to be. It's kind of, I'm glad that you sort of moved on to that. You, you wear or carry the number 48. Uh, you're also uh, uh, great fans of the Zardos. Talk a bit about your influences. Uh, who did you watch growing up? Uh, maybe Jimmy Johnson. You would have been kind of right about that age to see Jimmy's reign of terror at an impressionable young age, I guess, eh? Oh, yep. Most definitely. <laughs> see, I used to sit down on the couch with my dad and get to watch that all all day long. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, we actually, we probably have a couple of his, like, old uh, cars, like the one you have there in your background. And um, that out. yeah, so he he was my inspiration for the number, mm -hmm. and so we just kept with it. Nice. I yeah. love I love hearing, especially what you had said about, and this is what's you know for for me when I first started watching racing in Canada, it was it was cast car, it was mini series, um, it was those drivers. But for you hearing it was you know Tyler Hahn, Amanda Balson. Tom Walters, you're not, uh, let's just say this, uh, 
there's a lot of veteran racers in this series. And, and, and while you're a lot younger than a lot of your other people that you're racing against, why is it that, that, it, that the hot rods drew you to it? Because like I said, there's a lot of other divisions out there. And I guess my, my question is what it's like, because you're racing against a lot of, a lot of experienced drivers. Um, well, <laughs> so basically all my years, growing up racing it was always racing against people older than me like not sure not perhaps the age gap i have now but <laughs> everyone was older than me and they were all faster because they've been doing it for years and i was like well at that point in time i learned there's no better person to learn how to race against people than the people that have been doing it for years so i was like there's a bunch of people here that have been doing it for years they all drive differently whether it's by a little bit or a large margin so i get to sit there and learn from them on like how to drive better how to enter the corner differently how to exit differently how like you can change lanes and all that and set up so like and i i just sitting there i chose this because it's like this is going to be probably one of the better learning experiences and how many other divisions can you say well sure Take my friend Cody Wilds, for example. He races the uh, street stocks or super stocks, or I I'm not sure what they're called at Delaware. And well, he races them and he, someone asks him what he drives. He just says street stock or super stock or a late model driver. They just say that they drive a late model. Or I get to say, I drive a 68 Chevelle. As yeah. a 19 year <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can go a little in depth. That, that ride's got some roots in automotive hair, like history. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, it, I I wonder, and I we've asked this. I've asked this to Tyler Hahn. I've asked it to Nick Clark. I think Graydon's going to know the question that I'm going to ask. There's been a lot of cars that have come on and, and been in the the Oscar Hot Rod series. So, what's one that hasn't made it? I mean, we got a Packer this year. Come on, like the the amount of variety is fantastic. We've seen Nomads in the past. Um, what's one car that we haven't seen? that you would love to see in the hot rod series oh no I'm not i have too many choices <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i don't think we ever thought we would see a truck and yeah. nickel i mean what can't he do right yeah like, kenny is like super knowledgeable so once i heard about it i was like that's going to be amazing yeah to see and yeah. I, I'm going to be honest. I can't even think of an answer for you for that question. <laughs> you know what? You got a lot of time because we got <laughs> we got all the time in the world to hear what the answer is going to be. Uh, <laughs> the, the the year, obviously, like we said, it 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 has its moments. But what are the highlights for you? Obviously, Brighton has got to be. I mean, you were wheeling that car. I mean, what? We, luckily, because you guys were were streaming, we were able to see the race itself. Uh, how was the experience again racing a hot rod on dirt compared to the asphalt? Do you have to do too much to the car? Um, so here's the thing for my car, I had to raise it up about two inches in ride height just so I wouldn't quite bottom out. And you actually have to kind of give the car more rear bite than like you would ever really want on a pavement track. Like, so. But, or at least that's what I did, and it would give me a really good drive off the corner. And if you have to enter differently, and you have to take basically all of your front brake out, so you don't lock up going into the corners, oh. and you just lightly glide the brakes in. I find, and then the car will set. You can just use the throttle to roll through the corner, and you can do that. But uh, this year, when I hopped in Steve Book's dad's car. It was a completely different chassis than mine. So I was like, oh no, I've never raced a leaf sprint car before. What in the world do I do? Right. And well, I went out for the hot laps and I'm like, this, this feels pretty good. And went out for the heat race and well, it definitely felt really good. <laughs> and uh, just kept, kept the car rolling because I, I'm not sure what he had to do to that car, for example, but I know for mine, I might have wanted to change springs depending on what springs i had in it from the week before depending on what track mm -hmm. so that way i didn't just go into the corner and light the tires up and spin out in front of everybody 
or if I had too low of a spring, it would just start kind of skimming across the ground. So you kind of have to play it by ear a little bit. So personally, I, I would have brought some different parts and pieces and just seen how it does. Nice. My, uh, my family was uh, lucky enough to bunk in with you guys uh, at Delaware. Uh, it was a great experience camping with everybody around there. Uh, you have a, a really core support group uh, with Reg and everything. Talk a little bit about like your your core group that uh, that helps you do this and get you the track and get the cars ready for you because there's been a lot of engine changes and stuff this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a long list. If I'm going to be honest here, but I'll I'll get through through it hopefully semi quickly. Okay. Uh, to your, as you met, there's my stepmom Tracy and my dad Cleveland. Um, there's Reg and his son Ty. Ty's our media person, so he runs our TikTok and the CT Racing uh, Instagram. Does a, great and all. Job. Does a great job. Yeah, I actually got to talk to Ty at Peterborough this weekend, so I kind of was able to do the, the Claxton family tour there between Delaware and Peterborough, which was great. So, yeah, it was great to meet those guys. Sorry, carry on, Connor. No worries, no worries. Um, so there's that main group, and they're usually the ones that are at the track with me. Um, but then there was a couple of my friends, Friends from just here in town would come by. My friend Nick and Caleb, uh, they came by at a couple points just to help me put motors in and and or stand on the uh, engine hoist because my driveway is a little unstable. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that. Uh, there was our one friend, uh, my dad's friend, Jamie. Uh, he came by and helped us put the engine in, or one of, I should say. Um, then there's also the uh, one sticker on my car, Body by Brooms. So Jerry Broom, the 93 hot rod that occasionally comes out and races with us, he uh, actually helped us like put the body together and get it all hung. And his, uh, him and his dad were a lot of help to us to get, get it out for the first season and this season. So I have to give them a huge thanks. Uh, let's see here. That's just about it. And I, I'll be honest, I have to thank all my competitors in the division as well. Is like They're so much help at the track honestly and it's amazing to be able to go up to uh like steve book for example who has years on years of experience and go hey can you maybe point me in the direction here on like what i should do or this is what the car is doing and do you have any ideas on this and like you'd give help uh tyler Hahn and his brother daniel they're giving me help uh like and then there's all the other influences at the track of like hey I get to race against so many people that have experience. It's amazing. I think in return, like all those guys you mentioned, like you're, you're getting that wealth of knowledge when you go and ask those guys a question and they're happy to help you out and stuff. But it also is probably kind of cool for those guys to see young blood like yourself come in there that, that does have the passion for those cars and, and the old school style. And, and, and I think if you're gaining the respect of those old school racers, that probably goes a long way in the big picture because you are racing with, I, I don't want to single out like, but like when you're racing those old school racers, they have a different code maybe than what quote unquote new school racers have. And that maybe be, it will, it teaches you more car control to stay off people whenever you can and, and that sort of thing. And it definitely shows in your on track product for sure, man. Thank you. And yeah, like for example, last year getting the race against Bill Zardo, he's in the Canadian racing yeah. hall. I'm like how am I supposed to compete against him for rookie of the year? <laughs> 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 actually like no doubt. That's your rookie class. You got to go up against him. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there, I walked over to his car the one day, and I'm like, that is a lot nicer than mine. I wish I had that. <laughs> and, oh, he, he was so talented behind the wheel. And, like, for example, like, uh, see, I, I don't know, like, I, I've always, when I was growing up, I always learned, like, hey, if you bump into somebody, you go apologize. Doesn't matter if it's a little bump, big bump, you put them in the wall or not. You always have to go down and apologize. And so many of these guys are like, don't, don't worry about it, Connor. You don't have to apologize, but it's, it's been drilled into me for so long that it's just instinct. 
So that's good product of the raisin right there. Yeah. Mm. Responsibility for the actions. I mean, that's <laughs> that, that right there, I'm sure goes a long way with those yeah. people. If it, if it's something that they didn't even like think, Oh, no big deal. And you're, you're going over just to say, Hey, I hope everything's all good or whatever. And that I'm sure goes a long way for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, this past weekend at uh Flamborough when I was driving Keenan's car, and uh or yeah i guess two weekends ago sorry at flambro i uh accidentally got into the left rear of bromley in our heat race and i went over and apologized to him he's like oh connor don't worry about it after all i ran into the back of you first i'm like it's it doesn't matter i'm still going over to apologize bumping me doesn't hurt at all I, i was taught how to bump correctly and all that like just to work with each other so i i can Take a bump, no problem. I, I rarely ever will give one out. So yeah. it's always just good experience with everybody on the track, really. Yeah. It's it's remarkable when you hear divisions that and, and we hear all about the, you know, stuff when stuff doesn't go right and rivalries and wrecks and all that type of stuff. But what we love to do here on this show is get to hear about all the good stuff that happens um, between competitors and, and during a, a series, the Oscar, obviously the Os- Oscar hot rods um, and Oscar modifieds uh, probably supported by our good partners at uh, JRS auctions who partnered with us for this episode. And they partnered with you on the race car. Um, but let's uh, give you a couple minutes to shout out all of your partners before we wrap it up, because they're the ones that get you uh, to and from the racetrack each and every week. All right, well, there's Kenny McNichol Welding, there's a RFK Paralegal Service. service. Um, why can't I think of any of these all of a sudden? Um, it's the lightning round. Yes. Yeah. The quiz Just of all quizzes. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's uh, Butterworths as well. Uh, they're a huge help to me. I've been having to go work there in their shop after hours, just to get the car ready, scale it and all that. They, they've been a huge help to us this year. Um, oh my, why can't I think of any of these all of a sudden? Uh. Well, you got us. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. we're on there. <laughs> uh, you threw us on there. We, uh, yeah. which we appreciate, obviously. I mean, we met uh, last year, I think for the first time at ACC and we we really love that you know you guys are just all together really you can see the family atmosphere um at the racetrack and you know it especially um that you've got great i mean like even though I, i can't say that i know all the partners on them you start to become familiar um obviously Great and got very familiar with with Jay Wilds at uh, Wilds Printing, a good supporter of you. Uh, obviously, Tracy, who's a partner oh, on our uh, partner yes, on our show as well. Very much. And there's Tracy Ellis PC two seventy five. Um, you got the red line. Red line. Drive with Sonia. I got the list right here. Oh, perfect. We're, we're gonna we're gonna work through it. We're gonna work through it. Red line Chevelle part, which I've got to ask. The red line Chevelle parts legit. Is that where you get your pieces for the car or? Um, I think they're actually just one of the division sponsors. I'm not hundred percent sure. I know I've gotten a couple things from them, like front valences and all that. And the fact that they the even group... still have that stuff. Oh. Wicked. Oh yeah. It's amazing. Uh, NOS, uh, NOS motors auto finance. And then now yeah, you've yeah. already got the other ones done. So, well, oh, oh. It's also, uh, Buffy Ellis, uh, and her uh, real estate firm. And uh, I think that's just about it. I think so. It's one of our favorite divisions. It is one of our favorite teams. The fact that you guys get to go out there and, and do what you get to do. And the fact you even got to go out and do a bone stock uh, race on top of. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, not we didn't get to really race yet, but. Um, are you guys planning to be back for the ACC on Saturday or is your season now finished for the year? Well, um, I'm kind of playing the hot rods by ear. I'm going to see how, how everything's going because most of my crew is away on work. 
to catch up for their time off. And I know the bone stock will be there again. And uh, to hear, if we were to if we were to have ran on the Monday there, mm-hmm. I was actually hopping into Wade Thorne's mini stock as well for the feature. Oh. Yeah, so uh, I got drunk last year in the Young Guns race, and I was super ecstatic for the Young Guns races here, and then all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah, I wasn't. Too- <laughs> I was like, I just towed the car off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, yeah. Connor, we absolutely love watching you uh, getting the opportunity to race. And like I said, you're one of uh, everybody you got around you um, really is um, great people. And, and we're very, very proud to be on your race car. And we were on it for the full season this year, which was an honor. Um, one of the only actually... I think you were the only one in the Oscar hot rods. We joined Tyler a little bit later, but um, to have us on there and uh, we can't wait for next year as well. So uh, this is Connor Ellis on our JRS auctions episode. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me.